Welcome to Modern Church Leader, a short daily show to help you grow your church, be more effective and efficient and powerful for the kingdom of God. Today I'm going to talk about culture and how culture shapes a lot of the decisions we make as consumers. Um, Really the rise in the last 20 years from a marketing perspective has been that companies and I'm, I'm talking kind of outside the church world here, but it's going to relate. So get ready. Companies have spent billions of dollars on their brand. And they built that brand that sells a product or a service. And alongside that brand is a culture. So what's a culture? Like, what's that? Well, a culture is kind of a set group of things that you do, that you say, the way you act, maybe the way you look, uh, maybe not just the message, but how you talk about the message. Culture in a lot of ways is unseen and it's not overt. It's not straight in your face, here's what we are. Culture, especially for millennials, is about what we do and how we interact with people and how we trust people and how we demonstrate not just with our words, but with our actions. And so culture and brands have been very intertwined uh, over the last 20 years. And, you know, look at a company like Apple where they built a brand, but you go to the Apple store and you get a sense and feel of a culture. The lines are clean. It's They try it not to be chaotic unless they re- release a new iPhone and there's lines out the door, in which case they use that as part of their brand and their culture, the excitement. I've been at a few iPhone openings at Apple stores and I remember being in New York many years ago and I'm lined up around the block and they got employees and their T-shirts and they're all clapping and cheering and that was incredible culture building and brand building. And so, okay, Dean, how does this relate to church? Well, um, whether you like it or not, your church has a culture. And one of the things that we have to fight against as churches who are constantly looking for visitors, right? Like we want new people to come. No new people, no growing. So we want our churches to grow, which means we want to attract new people. Sometimes we spend a lot of money like marketing and doing Facebook ads and putting up signs and banners or building a new building. I mean, we're trying to get people. We like run an evangelistic campaign where we say, hey, everyone, invite a friend to church on Sunday. And you can do all that. But if you don't have a culture of friendliness, and let me just tell you, people feel, outsiders instantly feel, if there's not this embracing culture of the outsider, they instantly feel it. And they they can go through a whole 90-minute church experience and still feel like an outsider. So when we start talking about church and culture, the number one Culture that you want to create as a church is a church that embraces and accepts and is this open-armed sense of, we are so excited you came to visit us. You could have gone anywhere, but you, you decided to come to our church today. And so we're going to make you feel over-the-top welcome. And this digs down a little bit into some struggles that sometimes we have as church people where we cast judgments on people, either by the way they look or the way they dress or where they come from. Maybe we're taking judgments on their socioeconomic background and and we're having all these preconceptions about who a person is. Guess what? They're feeling that. Yeah, they totally do. And so when we talk about culture and kind of the culture that we need to first build in the church, it's acceptance and love, and you're welcome here. And I know this might be a bit awkward for you, but come on in, and I'm going to sit with you, and I'm going to make this as unawkward as possible, and you're going to have a great time here today. That right there, if we can get that happening in every church lobby, every entrance to a church, with that person, I would just as a side, you know, we all have these beautiful people that greet visitors. You know, that's a really important person in your team. 
And there's some people like, I want to be the door greeter, but you know, they shouldn't be the door greeter. And that's a tough conversation to have with those people. You know what? There's five other great jobs for them to do. You want to get bubbly, sanguine, up, positive, fun, awesome people that that's, that smile, that are excited, that love shaking hands, that love giving hugs. That's the first impression that you want as visitors come through the door. And that is a culture setup. Like you're like, oh, does it really matter who's on the front door? Absolutely it matters who's on the front. Because that's often the first experience. Maybe you've got, you got parking lot attendees who are, you know, those guys need to be happy too. Anyone, again, from a business side, customer facing, who isn't that kind of person is going to set the culture for your company or your church. So those first impressions have to be the impression of you're welcome here. You're brand new. I can see that you're brand new because I'm really smart at reading people. And I look at you and you've got that little deer in headlights looks like, oh, this is brand new and I don't know where to go. And where do I take the kids? And oh my gosh, there are so many opportunities in the first minute to set the culture of friendly, welcoming. We want you to be here. This is a family. You're welcome to join it. And so I think that's the first culture that we need to set as, as a church. I think other parts of our culture deal with things that are getting ingrained as Christians. The longer you become a follower of Christ, the more you forget about those first days, months, years of becoming a Christian. I wasn't raised in a Christian family. I started attending church, you know, late teenage years. It was very unfamiliar to me. And it was just every day was exciting. I mean, every every week I went to church. It was such a discovery process. And, um, you know, eventually I got I got to work out a lot of things and I grew in my faith. And, you know, here's, here's a part of church culture that I think we need to remember, especially as church leaders. Remember the wonder of the brand new Christian starting on the journey. And what we kind of take for granted as mundane and something we've gone through the motions in maybe for years. Remember the excitement. You know, the Bible says, you know, the Apostle John said, remember your first love. Remember what it was like to first embrace and find Christ. That's a, that's a beautiful thread to weave into the culture of our church because that keeps us connected to the people that matter. They're going to help our church grow. And so it's having that love of people, having that kind of sense of I'm going to go out of my way to really model, show, do everything I can to help this person on their journey. And I'm going to get right down at their level, eye to eye, face to face, and I'm going to be excited about their Christian journey and value what they're going through right now. I think people 100% feel that. And the last thing I'd say about, well, there's two things. One, the generosity culture, which we talk a lot about here. I think you know, I, I, I've talked to a lot of pastors that say, Dean, you know, I just don't have a giving ch church. I go, well, there's a reason for that. You haven't taught giving. You haven't modeled it. You haven't challenged people to, to be generous. And so you don't have a, a giving culture. You're right. And, you know, you can't preach a, a message on tithing for one Sunday and expect to have a giving culture. It doesn't work like that. It's constant. So I think you can build generosity as a culture through a lot of the things that we talk about here at, at Tidely. So... I, I think, you know, that's something that you should strive to build into the life of your church. And then I think the final kind of thing I'd say on culture, which is a very big subject, but I would, I would honestly say that if you're a church leader and you don't have kind of a sense of value around people, so we get caught up in the tasks and whether you're teaching, whether you're organizing meetings, whether you're administrating stuff, it's all this stuff goes on behind. Most people don't know all the things that go on behind the scenes of a church to make it all function. The worship, the practice, the lighting, the audio, everything. There's so many moving parts. But you know what? If all that went away and all it was was, you know, 30, 50, 100 people in a room and, and it was just about them. Sure, we love the bells and whistles. We love the technology. We love all that stuff. But I think the number one key for developing a great, healthy culture in, in our churches is that we love people. And we love the ones who are in the church and we absolutely adore and love the ones that come into our church from the outside. And that shows this trickle down into 
all the different areas of church life if we are passionate about people. And we know that God loves everyone. I get asked all the time. I, 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 I live straddle into the business world and I get asked about my faith and, you know, I get asked about all these crazy things. And I said, you know, Christianity boils down to some really simple things. Jesus loves everyone. The only people who got angry at were the religious people that were <laughs> representing God incorrectly. He accepted everybody. Like there wasn't anyone who couldn't come up and have a conversation with Jesus. So I think the sense of the church having this culture of people first, loving people, I think goes a long way in creating that environment, that atmosphere that is going to not just keep churches healthy, but keep churches growing. And I think that's why culture is such a critical part of church life. Thanks for listening. Please review Modern Church Leader on Apple Podcasts and visit our website for more resources at tithe.ly or follow the links in the show notes.